All right, welcome everyone. Chris Petri here. Thanks so much for coming by, painting along with me. We're all together working on this gorgeous beginner style painting. It's a storefront, um, New York City. We're gonna have fun doing all the different uh, techniques and methods to get to the finished product. Basically, we'll start out, we'll do a careful preliminary drawing. We'll use our ruler to measure out blocks of areas in the composition that we can definitely see from looking at the photograph on our phone. So I have my phone with me and we're actually going to work right from that. So you'll see that we have the finished painting right here. We'll have this on camera, the finished uh, photograph. And you'll see how we just basically blocked out all these windows, the major sections of this with a ruler, a couple of measurements. I cover the measurements and the way that we're going to put it all together with a preliminary sketch. Took us about 20 minutes to a half an hour to do a good solid pencil drawing on this. Nothing too difficult, just measuring carefully as we go. Um, and then once we were completed with that, we were really all set. We were ready to go in and paint, and that's what we did. We went in and we mixed some really good colors. We didn't do anything high intensity colors. We used kind of like a nice simple color scheme, some warms, some cools, some blues, some reds. Got a really nice uh, glazing technique going here. We got the whole paper covered quick with a light glazing. And then we went over with our darks and medium tones. And you can kind of see how we built this painting uh, by just doing the glazing technique and um, maybe a little mix of the Alla Prima method too here and there. So um, just a fun painting to do. Join along with me here. We're going to have a great time together. And um, so get ready in the next couple hour, hour and a half, we'll have this done and you'll have a beautiful painting. So let's get started. All right, so let's keep uh, progressing here through. We just saw the finished painting. First thing I like to do is just make sure I have my paper taped down um, onto my uh, working surface here. I just have a, actually a um, bit of uh, construction paper underneath this here. And um, I take my pre-cut mat. So I buy some pre-cut mats in the uh, local um, big box stores, the art stores near my home and then I just put them onto the paper and I make a small dot in each corner of the um, pre-cut mat like so. Just a tiny dot barely visible and then I make sure that I'm pretty much I can safely say that if I stay within these boundaries here I'll have enough space around my painting that I'll have enough room that I can move my mat around a little bit and find that perfect spot and then set it down, trim the paper and then put it into a frame. So I always think let's be, um, uh, let's be thoughtful about before we start our painting, what can we do that's going to make a little uh, more sense for us as, as artists. We want to always think of it as, Hey, this next painting we're going to do might turn out just awesome. And we want to put a, you know, put it uh, in a frame. So that, that way I can put a mat on this first. And then when we're done with the painting, if it turns out well, we'll put the mat over the top of this painting and then we'll put it into a frame and it'll be ready to put up on the wall. You know, we can give it as gifts or so forth. Someone's birthday might be soon, the holidays, so forth. So let's do that. We have the, basically we understand that the pencil mark we just made around the paper is plenty good. We can paint all the way out to the edges of our tape. And we'll have plenty of room again so that we can put our pre-cut mat down and place it on there and have it ready to be framed. And again, we're doing our gorgeous street scene here. So this is pretty much a square in shape. It's not really a rectangle. So we can pretty much see here that we have kind of a rectangle here and it's in the portrait format, which means it's kind of vertical. Our rectangle is vertical versus horizontal. So this we can kind of maybe create a, a little bit of sky in the top of our scene here. So let's do that. So let's say if this is a square and we kind of look at our picture, this looks to be about a square here. So we can go a little higher than a square maybe, make it a little bit larger like that. And then we'll use this for sky up here. Okay, so then I'll do a little bit of a darker line up here. 
So I'm just going to go across with a line across here, like so. That's going to be the top of the roof. And then we're going to um, make a uh, bit of a rooftop fascia board. And we'll do a cornice too. So we're going to make an ornate cornice here on the top. So I'll make a, a little bit of a thinner line up here all the way across, and then I'll make a thicker line here. And that'll just give us a little bit of a bit of um, detailed cornice up above here. And then I'll just make a few more lines that we can have for uh, some details. And then maybe we can make some, we can make some vertical lines like this. And this might be some blocking on the cornice, just a little bit of detail. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just put them every so often. If you can keep them pretty even, that's fine. If you want to use a ruler, that's a perfect time to use a ruler if you feel like you're not going to be able to keep things, um, uh, let's say, evenly spaced. If you would like to keep things evenly spaced, you can always do that. You can always go across this and this is 10 inches wide, this paper. You know, you could say like maybe every half of an inch you're going to put a square block or a square shape. And you could go across the paper like that. Maybe just make a little hash mark at every half inch interval. Or you can use, you know, centimeters too as well. And you maybe say every two centimeters you'll make a little small hash mark. I just went across a little haphazard. I didn't really worry about it too much. They look somewhat even, which is good enough for me. I think in this painting we're not going for real critical uh, details. And then since we're, let's work with a ruler. It's always great to have these um, to give ourselves a really nice um, level line across our picture. So when we look at this photograph we can kind of see that it's broken down into two basic sections. You have your first floor, which has a higher uh, height so our first floor has a higher ceiling, and it looks like, actually it might be equal, but on the exterior of the building this is a little bit higher than an equal division of the two spaces here. So this, let's kind of recreate that. Let's go here. We can always say what will help us to find that space division here of a little bit higher on the bottom section and then a little bit thinner up here on this section. So that what can help us to do that would be find our halfway point and then go up a little bit from there and get this next level across, which is a stone uh, band, band that goes across the uh, facade here. So I'll say, okay, let's go up halfway is about here. So I'll make a hash mark here and that's halfway up from the bottom to up here. And then I'm going to say a little bit above that is going to be this stone band here. So I think that's about good there. And then once I get that established, I just take a level line and go across. And it can be light, just so you have that line going across. And then we'll come down and we'll look at here and we'll say this sign here, I covered the sign with a little bit of white, um, um, paint in my paint program, which is on my phone. I didn't want to have the name of this uh, store because maybe it's a problem where if I make the name of the store and I show it online here, someone might give me an, a problem with that, like I'm trying to take or maybe steal some of their um, property rights with using their name and so forth. So to avoid that, I just cancel it out here on the sign on this uh, scene so that we don't have any problems and then YouTube will let me put this on on YouTube, on the uh, video here. So let's just look at this and we'll say this section up here, which is the, the sign above the storefront here, that's about one third down to the bottom of the door here and the, across the storefront. So you got like pretty much a third here, one third, two thirds across here, and then another third down to the bottom. So if you were to take this space here, and look at it from a point of if you wanted to measure it and say, okay, it's about 15 inches. So we would go off uh, 15 centimeters. So we would go 5, 10, and 15 is the bottom. And that gives us our thirds. So we can make another couple hash marks over here if we would like. Just to kind of give us that div space division. 
and then we'll take our another line across where this section is here where the sign is above the uh, windows and the door and it looks to be an apartment building here and then this awning kind of sets up into that space division there a little bit so let's kind of capture that and it goes across somewhat here and what I'll do is I'll go over this with darker pencil line. I'm just trying to get some pencil lines here, light pencil lines going, just so that we have everything laid out correctly. And then let's look at it from a standpoint of going across this way, across the picture, the doors in this uh, painting we're going to do, this scene here, street scene, it's a storefront. We have two doors, so here we have an apartment door that leads up uh, into the upper floors of the apartment building here. And then this door here is the door to the store here, storefront. So let's keep it basic and just we'll make two doors and then the storefront window. And that looks about halfway. If we can see that there, that's about halfway. Halfway from here over to this door jam or the side of the door over here. And then another halfway over to here, which is the edge of this storefront here in the building. So let's kind of keep it about halfway across would be the edge of this door here. So let's do that. Let's come across here. And again, you can measure if you want and get the halfway point. Uh, 25 centimeters, so that's 12.5 centimeters is about halfway. Might be a little bit less, so I'll maybe go a little bit less than that. And then we'll just get a vertical line going here down to the ground level. And then we're going to divide this space in half too. Actually, let's not do that. Let's start to build out these um, parts to the facade that are going to give us a better realistic look of exactly what we're looking at here. So let's do this. The space division is about halfway from here, which is the left side of this apartment door. Might even be a little bit over from there, but we'll go with a halfway point. And you can always again measure and say what's the halfway point of this square here because we're doing the two doors here. So this is a square which is halfway across here, this square here, and then we'll divide that in half. So there we go. 12 centimeters, 6 centimeters. And we'll go like that and we'll get a halfway point there. So now I think we have plenty of um, plenty of lines that we can kind of do the rest of the drawing freehand. We don't have to do everything with a, a ruler and measurements. We kind of, if we can get the basics of it, we're kind of good. Um, I'll also transfer up here a little bit. We have four windows up here and a fire escape. So I can kind of see that the windows up here are all equally spaced. So we could do this. We could go in from the edge a little bit and make a line and go in from the edge just a little bit, maybe about a centimeter and a half. And then from there we'll divide this into four sections to make four blocks. And then we'll draw our windows within those four blocks. And just to give ourselves a good space division to work with. So I'll take again my lines for, this is, uh, let's say, um, this is 22. So let's say 22. Let's go, uh, let's see, 22. So that would be 3, um, 5, 10, 15, 20. All right, so we'll go 5.5 .5 centimeters. 5.5, 5, 11, and then uh, 11 and 5, so 5. 16.5 and then about 22. Okay, so that's pretty good. So you just try to divide these lightly, pencil in four divisions there for the four windows one, two, three, and four. And we'll free draw or you know, freehand draw the rest of this. We just wanted to kind of get our space divisions somewhat good. 
you can do it all by eye if you'd like to. If you feel confident, you can do it that way. But this is more of a beginner series painting. So we're going to use our ruler a little more, measure things out, be a little more careful. This way we get a really good um, uh, result when we finish up the painting. So let's do that. I'm going to go with another for this parapet wall up here. It's always good to have a nice, good, heavy cornice on top of the building like that. And, um, and then we just have some sidewalk in front here. We can do that. We can just put a couple indication lines. Sidewalk here. All right, so, all right, we've already done a lot of work here. We've kind of really broken this painting down into um, subdivisions within the whole of this square. So basically we said we had a square here um, and we have a rectangular sheet of paper. So we just made ourselves a little more creative here by leaving some area up here for the sky. Um, so we'll put some blue sky up here. And then we have the building, which is the square within our view here. This building might be more floors than these two floors here, but we're just going to be creative here, do a little uh, artist liberty. You're the artist, you have to take liberty sometimes and just come up with some ideas. Do some other research on your uh, internet maybe and look at some other pictures of buildings. And this is a, we'll call this a two-story building. We have a large sign in front here, a storefront with a door to the storefront, storefront window. And then we have an apartment complex um, doorway here that leads up to the upper floors um, for the apartment building up here. So that's pretty much it. And again, we space, we uh, did space divisions here. How you saw me use the ruler to kind of get some space divisions, basically just to go over it one more time. let tell you what, let's take a break. Always good to take a break. I'll come back. We'll talk about it one more time for just two minutes, how we broke this up, up you know, into smaller space divisions so that we're able to capture this really realistic look of all the windows and doors and all the other elements of this painting of this uh, storefront. Let's keep it accurate. It's going to look much better if we keep it accurate. If we go in and try to draw this freehand, we could have problems. Let's use the ruler. Always great to just take a ruler and start measuring a few things and, um, We'll be much better off. We'll get a much more realistic look. But again, you're the artist. If you want to go much more creative and not get too detailed, you can also do it freehand. It's up to you. Uh, okay, so we'll be right back and we'll um, just go over quick for two minutes when we come back. The space divisions, how we did those on this paper, on our sheet of watercolor paper, and then we'll get right into the painting. All right, we're getting started again. Let's have a fun time doing this uh, painting now. We just want to go over one more time quick how we got these space divisions again so that we come up with a really realistic um, rendition of this um, beautiful um, uh, New York City storefront here. Um, I had a picture I found online which really looked fantastic. We're going to do the red bricks. Um, interesting uh, grayish colors for the, the metal, the signage. We have a interesting fire escape. Yeah, it's just a nice, really mellow color scheme, very subdued, nothing too bright and flashy. Kind of a nice, good-looking painting to do with um, a nice, uh, calm feeling of a nice storefront in New York City. Well-weathered and uh, just a good feeling for this uh, painting, I feel. So... All we did was we just really made the real basic uh, note in our mind when we first started looking at this photograph was we really enjoyed the photograph. It looks really, uh, you know, interesting with the colors, kind of subdued colors, um, interesting shapes, a lot of squares and rectangles, lines, nice, fine, straight, you know, sharp lines, kind of a really interesting look. And then we noticed, secondly, let's kind of as we're thinking of drawing and painting this, let's get the space divisions of everything kind of on the paper so that we can draw, draw it effectively to make it look very realistic. You could do this freehand if you have a lot of experience with drawing, but again, this is a beginner's uh, video and tutorial, so I want to just cover using the ruler, and that's what we did. We just took this space division here and made it a square on our rectangular paper, and then we left room above the building here we left room above the building for some sky color, some blue sky we're going to have up here. 
And then here we took the square and we divided, we divided it in half basically. And then we went a little bit above the halfway point to get ourselves up to the top of this signage for the front of the storefront. And that stone uh, band that goes across the facade right across here. So that's how we got this line here. Then we said, how tall is that sign? And we really deduced that that sign is actually one third down from this stone band here to the bottom of the storefront. So if we go down one third, that's our line across here, which is the bottom of the sign and the awning. And then the rest of it would be the storefront, the doors, and then above that, whatever's left is the windows. We have some really beautiful tall windows here and some really gorgeous or, you know, ornamentation with stone. We're not going to get in all those fine details there, all details there, although you could do that. That would be a real a monumental effort to go in here and try to replicate all of these fine carvings on the stone and everything here. These are really beautiful. Uh, it's a very old building with uh, hand carved stone um, window dressings around the outside of the um, windows and over the heads of the windows. So looks really incredible here looking at the photo and then we have a really nice fire escape there going up. So let's uh, continue on here. We said we would just make four blocks, even blocks up here on top so that we could put in those windows somewhat evenly spaced across the top of this. And that's basically it. That's what we did with our ruler. A couple little measurements here and there. You can go back to the previous 15 or 20 minutes and you'll get all the measurements you need. I kind of covered using pretty much centimeters. Seems to be a little bit easier to um, uh, work with the ruler in centimeters to get all of our space divisions. You could use inches though too as well. That works fine if you're used to the American standard uh, measurements. That, that works as well. Fine if, if you're used to that. Um, I find it is a little bit easier working with centimeters, the metric system, to kind of uh, equally, it's for mathematically it's, it seems a little easier. And um, let's continue on. Let's get some paint going here. But before we paint, we do have to draw in a few more details. So let's, I'm going to contour draw uh, the, the other details in this painting enough that we have plenty to work with when we go into paint. So we're going to look at another 10 minutes of drawing probably. But I'm not going to make this a um, five hour video. <laughs> I'm just going to try to get the basic drawing down now of the rest of the scene working within the space divisions we created, which makes it a lot easier. So I'll kind of just talk my way through it so you can kind of hear. I'll kind of explain as I go. So right now, maybe I'll start over here on the left. And I'm going to leave the sides of the painting a little, not so much detail. I'll just start over here with the awning. So I'm working right here on the awning. I'm gonna I'm gonna go right across here and do this bottom half. So I'm just gonna go across here and just kind of gonna make the awning here. And I'm just gonna go right across and I'm gonna do the metal frame for this sign. And if you drift off a little bit with a line or something, you can just stop a quick second and lift up with some kneaded eraser and then maybe get back on track again. Maybe that sign I drifted off there a little bit. And then I'll go right across over here with this sign here like that. And then I'll try to get the uh, frame of the sign, like so. And you can use a ruler for this if you feel more comfortable doing it that way. And then next, I'm going to do the um, stone band on top of this. It's a little thicker. Like that. And then I'll work my way down this way again here, and let's get these 
I'm just going to go down here. I'm not going to get overly worked up about this. I'm just going to go right across. This is the storefront window here. And I'm just going to do the frame. And then another line here for this frame. And then this would be the door. And I actually see that the awning goes all the way across. So if you have an issue again, you have to erase. No problem. Erase that and go right across with the awning. Like so. There we go. And then we'll continue with our door. And there is a line going across here. And then we'll the doorway is in here like so. And then there's a metal door let's put it in you know we could have made this maybe if we wanted to um we could have left this without the metal um gates over the tops of the windows but this is kind of maybe early in the morning or in the early evening and the store is closed so they have the metal gates down and you can see i went out of level there a little bit and again not a big deal. And then I'll go with some lighter lines across here. Okay, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm not going to go super critical with all the details. I'm just going to try to get a few lines in like that. And then we're going to do this doorway here, like so. And then there's a metal bar across the door there. That looks pretty good. Then we have this metal trim here by the this door over here. Then I'm going to come up here. Again, don't feel like you have to have everything exact. This is the window, transom window above the doorway. And then this is the frame of the door, storefront door here. I'm going to go down like that. I'm just going to make a few lines here. Then the door has a side light here. Like so. And then we have the bottom portion of the door here. And you can do a little more or a little less detail on the door if you want. Okay, so I'm just working all these lines. So I'm trying to kind of count the lines as I go across. Like here there's two lines for the doorway and then the frame next to the door. And then there's another one line here where the door is. And then there's another line here where there's the frame over here. And then you have the handle over here. Like that. And then there's a light over here, so we're going to capture this here. This goes down that way. And then the light's up here, so let's do a light. Like that. Then there's a darker doorway inside this doorway, so let's kind of get that in. We'll put that in. That darker doorway is halfway on this section here of the glass of this door. And then there's another bit of a line here. So that's just a little bit of detail for the interior of that space, which is on the other side of this door, the entrance door to the apartment building. And then we're going to start work and look how much work we've already got done. We're not going to get too much details over here with this storefront over here. Um, we might just make some indications later when we paint this. 
for some of these lines, which are the um, the uh, gate gate that goes over the top of the window, storefront window, and the the door of the store. Okay, so now we have this up here. Maybe we'll put uh, our own name of our own store here. We'll fill in your own name. This might be your own store. You're going to pretend you have here in the beautiful New York City area. So we'll have fun with that later. And um, you could pretend it's an art store maybe or a get art gallery of your own. And then I'm just going to do these windows here. So I'm just going to basically make four windows like this. I'll make them all the same. I'm going to try to keep this simple. You can get into this more details if you like. You can kind of create as much detail as you like in a painting like this. Um, since it's kind of like we're we're working together and we're kind of thinking of it as maybe this is just like a beginner style video where you're just starting out with painting, maybe even painting six months, three months, six months, maybe a year. And maybe you're just not going to want to go into too much incredible amounts of detail, but you do want to get a realistic look for this. We'll just make it simple and we'll do four windows and we'll make the fr uh, framing around the windows, the stone framing or stone ornamentation around the windows, the same equal each one, you know, a little bit thick like that. And then we'll put just a little indication of some lines like this just to, and we'll paint in a little detail when we paint these. Maybe on this one here, maybe we'll make these two. An extra little bit of detail up here. Like this, on top of these. And then maybe over here we're going to leave these just a little bit of orna ornamentation above, like that. Like that. And that should be good. And then we're just going to go halfway for our double hung windows here, like that, and we'll fill in some more details later. And then when we come back, we're going to take a little break now. We've done a lot of work, a lot of drawing now. Again, feel free to use a ruler. You can actually use uh, a smaller ruler. You can break a ruler in half if you have a ruler. You can always snap a ruler in half if you have a plastic one. Or you can purchase these online too. They have half size rulers, six inch rulers, and you can do some of these smaller details like the windows and things and some of these details over here the doors and so forth um, you can do these with a smaller ruler as well and I'm going to make this door a little bit smaller too over here so that it kind of matches this door over here a little bit these two doors are about the same size so I just wanted to narrow this door down a little bit here make it smaller like that Okay, good enough. And uh, all right, let's come back in a few minutes. Let's take a quick break and then we'll start mixing some colors. I think we're ready. Yeah, we're ready to paint at this point. So let's get excited. We're getting ready to paint now and um, finish up whatever details you think you might want to do. But I think this is plenty. And again, you can keep this more simple if you'd like to. You don't have to get into as many details with all the door frames and you can maybe keep it just large shapes if you want and see how that works for you. Maybe just do a quick rendition of it first with like less detail. And then maybe you come back in a couple weeks or a month and you try it again and you maybe you get into more details of it. But the picture is right here, the photograph. And of course you saw the finished painting in the beginning of the video. So you can use that. You can um, use the finished painting I uh, put on the first minute of the video. So you can hit pause and work from that or do a screen capture or a screenshot of the first minute of my video where the painting is on and you'll see that and you can use that for your um to study and to work from all right let's take a break and we'll come right back and we'll start painting okay we're back we're going to actually get our washes on now let's do the glazing technique here Glazing technique will work beautiful. We can get a whole wash across the whole paper, kind of get a tone going here for the whole pa paper, the whole painting, and then we can go in and do some darker um, portions on the top here. 
uh, on top of that light glazing. The only thing I think I would do right now is I want to add that fire escape, which I forgot to do before, and that basically sits right across um, the two middle windows. So I'll just take the take the ruler. I'll go across here. It goes across the two windows like so. And it's like this, like that, and it sort of goes in like this on an angle. And this is the darker section under here. And then we'll just do a couple, a couple lines here just to kind of get ourselves like this, just to get ourselves with a few lines that we can work with when, we're, when we start painting. We'll get most of this detail when we're painting. I'm just getting the railings of the uh, of the um, fire escape. And then there's the staircase that goes up on an angle like this. And it's a pretty steep angle. It ends up at the top of the painting here, right about there. So that looks good. So I'm going to do that. Like that and there's a ladder that comes down maybe all right that's good that looks pretty good I think that'll work all right good okay now I'm gonna use my larger um, synthetic brush which is the uh, Princeton Art and Brush Company flat brush and then I'll just move this out of the way for a second or two while we wet the paper. So I'm just taking some fresh clean water and just putting on some fresh clean water onto the top of the sky area here above the roof, dampening the paper. Not flooding it out too much with a ton of water, but just enough to kind of just dampen the, the paper. And that's all I'm doing, just going right across. Don't worry about it if you have some of the lead from the pencil um, getting uh, washed a little bit onto the paper, that's going to be fine. This is kind of a scene where we, we don't mind having it a little bit, um, we're going to have a like a nice glazing over the whole painting so that it looks, uh, you know, kind of relaxed and looks like the city. There's a little bit of that kind of grayish color to everything. This is a cloudy day maybe where it's not too sunny, so we don't have any real powerful sunlight in this scene. It just looks like a kind of a cloudy day. So we'll capture that mood by just making the colors a little bit. We'll downplay the brightness of the colors. And then we're going to start mixing our washes for the sky. Maybe I'll do the sky washes down here since we're, we have our blue here. Let's do some blue, two kinds of blues there, a light and a dark blue. And then let's go with a little bit of some red. Kind of gray that down a little bit with some red. It almost looks like a purplish color, maybe. And then maybe a little bit of brown here. So we'll use some brown and orange for a warmer color. So we're going to go with brown and orange for a warmer kind of color there. And then our blue sky color up top, and this will use the blue all the way across the whole paper as well as the brown and orange. We're going to kind of just mix it up. We'll use a few different colors. And then what else are we going to have? A touch of green. So I'll just mix a little bit of green into this, kind of make it an olivey green kind of feel. And um, we're going to do what else here? Let's see. What do we got there? Yeah, some gold, some yellow, and brown. Kind of a yellowy ochre color. Or a raw sienna, ochre kind of color. And then the green here too. All right, so we have a kind of a real mellow looking color selection here. Can you see how that's kind of pretty mellow? Not too much bright, exciting colors, but kind of a mellow looking grouping of colors. And it's really just warm and cools some blues down here for the sky and we'll put some of that color in the building 
and then a more of like a greenish brown here with a little bit of um, green, brown, yellow, and then up here yellow and brown for kind of a gold color, like that. And I think between all those colors we'll have a good feel up here for the first glazing. And again, just fun part here is let the watercolor do the work. That's the fun part of watercolor. Once you dampen that paper and you start putting on that wash like this, you know, you can have some clouds up here. So if you want to add clouds into the scene, you know, you just take a tissue and just blot up a little bit, make some clouds maybe coming into the scene up here like that. Just an indication of it up here, just a little bit, is all you need. Uh, the more the focal point of the painting is going to be all the interesting architecture. Uh, I'm going to put a little bit of gold up there, too, and green in the sky, just to make sure I'm mixing my colors around the painting. Good enough, just to get that mixture of colors that we need, and then we're just going to do the same thing. Maybe we keep the washes a little bit hit and miss, not everywhere. So like you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of hit and missing all of the colors, not painting like a wash on the whole paper. I'm kind of keeping it, uh, as you can imagine, um, hit and miss here and there. So I'm taking a little bit of each of the colors here and there, a little bit of green, a little bit of gold here and there, here and there. A little bit of the blue down here, here and there, here and there. Just like this. Have a fun time with this. You can always do another five or ten of these. and So if this one turns out terrible, you don't worry about it. You just keep working and doing another one. Or you take a break and do some flowers or something else and then come back and try it again a month or two later. And then this section here on the foreground. We'll keep the sidewalk kind of light so we can maybe, uh, and if you wanted to really lighten up the whole section really fast, you can take a tissue or a paper towel and you just lay it across like that and then just blot it up the whole way. If you ever want to do that quick, you can lighten up the whole section quick like that. Okay, I'm just going to do a little blotting here and there. But that's our first wash, everybody, and that's how easy it is. Let the paint do the work for you. Just get the colors mixed first in your palette, nice and light. Make some nice light washes, nothing too intense with colors, just light washes. We covered the colors you need. Once you have that, you're ready to go. You wet the whole paper, and then you just, as you saw, I just touched on all of these colors here and there, here and there, here and there, the whole way down the page, the paper. And now we're all set. Now we're just going to let this dry. You have to let this dry 100% though. Don't try to paint on this if it's damp at all. So you can use a blow dryer for 5 or 10 minutes and blow dry this whole thing off until it's 100% dry. Or you can come back in like an hour. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my blow dryer maybe after a few minutes of letting this dry, 5 minutes. Then I'll take my blow dryer and kind of make sure it's dry all the rest of the way. And then we'll start doing our darker darks. We're going to start getting all these beautiful reds over here. I forgot to bring my phone back online here. So, and then after we're let this all dry 100%, remember, it has to dry 100% now. Then you come back in and we're going to do all the darker darks in here. All the beautiful darks in the windows, the window frames. We're going to do these red bricks, the beautiful red brick colors, uh, the red brick awning color. And we'll get some of these darks too in here and in the windows. And then that's it. We'll have a fine painting completed and then again we'll do the dark ornamentation of things which is the fire escape some of the windows and I think we'll be good so let's come back in just about five or ten minutes or if you want to let it dry overnight um, that's fine too and I'm just lifting up any puddles I see very lightly so if I see any major puddles on my paper I just lift them up with a tissue very lightly and that's about that's about it it looks pretty good from this point all right, we'll be right back. Okay, we're back again. Now, the, the main thing I want to mention here, which is really, really critically important, is I did use a blow dryer, and I, I probably used it for five minutes to really get this paper dry. And what happens is 
the paper was all buckled. The paper was all buckled when we did this first wash. When I did this first wash of all that water and, and light paint mix mixture, the paper buckled quite a bit. And there was those little puddles and we kind of saw how we lifted up those puddles. All perfect. You've got it. You've got this. You got your drawing done with your ruler. You did your measuring. If you know, if you wanted to get that really realistic look here, we have our, let me just get my photograph back up online here. So we have our picture back online here. So we talked about blotting up the puddles of water before we uh, use the blow dryer or if you let this dry overnight or for two or three hours. But the main thing is the way you can tell your paper is dry is if it is flat, if it dries flat. If you still have a lot of buckles in your paper, that means it's still very damp and you don't want to paint on top of that at this point. So that's the main key here is before you go back in and start doing the darker washes like we're going to do now, you have to make sure your paper's pretty flat. I mean, there might be a little bit of, you know, inconsistency in the surface of the paper. Like it might have a little bit of some, you know, hills and valleys, but very, very subtle. If you have big buckles in your paper, that means your paper is still wet and you definitely got to let it dry 100%. So either you got to keep working on it with the blow dryer until the paper flattens out and is really dry to the touch 100% like this, where you can put weight on it, push down hard and you don't feel any dampness. It's pretty much all dry. Then you can go in and start painting now and doing our secondary washes and glazings. That's the really key right here uh, at this point of the, um, of, of the video. Okay. So my paper is like 99% dry and now we're ready to go in and start doing our darker washes. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to just mention that I have a few other brushes here. I'm going to see if I can get the brushes that I usually use. Okay, so these are our beginner's brushes. Uh, I'm always using the Simply Simmons number uh, nine, I think that is, or number six, Simply Simmons number six. These are the other, well, we use this brush to do our washes, I think. Our main larger washes, the 5 8 flat brush. Then we have the uh, number 6 flat brush, same uh, brand, Princeton Art and Brush Company. And then I have a few of these other synthetic brushes in the studio. And this, of course, is the Prang Oval 16 brush with the yellow tip on the uh, end of the brush here. That comes with the set. So if you buy the Prang Oval 16 set, you have this brush that you get with the set automatically. And then that's perfect. You can do a smaller uh, a version of this painting if you have just this brush and this paint set. But if you're working in a larger format like this, which is like I think a, an 11 by 14, then you're gonna kinda need some of these larger flat brushes. And that's why I buy the Princeton Art and Brush Company um, brushes, because it comes in like a six brushes in a pack for like 12 or $15 or something like that. And you know, you have plenty of brushes and large brushes too to get some of these larger washes on. So let's do this. Let's, we have our synthetic beginners brushes. We'll put these over here on the side. And then what we'll do is we'll start mixing up now our darker washes that we're going to need. So I'm going to actually start to get some really, really nice darks going. And then we can do middle, t middle tonal values a little bit later, but let's get the dark darks in there first. So let's go in and I'm going to take brown, blue, brown, red, blue, brown, and red. Touch of black. Not too much though. Just a little bit of the black. Try to mix in that black very, very sparingly because it's very powerful. This black here is very powerful. If you mix it in there, make sure you have plenty of brown and red and blue in there too to kind of give it some variation, maybe with some orange too, maybe. All right, so there we go. Let's get some darks in here. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, where are these dark darks? Well, I see some dark darks under the fire escape here. You can use a round brush too here. Maybe, it, maybe it's better if I use my Simply Simmons here. So let me do that. Instead of using this flat brush, let me use my Simply Simmons brush here. So I'll just put that other flat brush over to the side. And this might work a little better for the fire escape. And that's pretty dark under there. So I'll try to get this dark, dark there. Like that. Under here. I just slide the brush across. Like that. And 
and that's pretty good. There we go, just a really good solid dark under there. Okay, and then um, let's come, let's try to find some other darks here. I see another dark under here. I'm going to go around and look around the painting and try to get as many darks in as I can. This is just a little bit of a dark there, barely visible. But then over here I see another dark going across. And again, you don't have to be perfect about this. You know, I'm just going to try to get the, the brush strokes in. And I'm going to try to move at a good pace, if you'll notice. So I'm, get, I'm going at a good pace, almost like I'm listening to a song or some music. And I'm just going through the painting. And I'm smudging already, you can see that. So that's a problem. If you have that problem, no problem. Grab a little bit of clean water. Dip it into your um, either a tissue or a paper towel, and then just blot that with a little bit of water, and then scrub a little bit like that, like that, and then you see how that comes right off. And we don't mind if that happens here because this is going to be a painting where there's lots of. Um, This is not a, like a perfectionist painting or anything like that. So now what you could do is you can take a napkin or a paper towel or a uh, tissue and place it under your hand and then rest it on the paper and then work like that so that you don't lean into the... And then sometimes too you can swing your body around. So I'm swinging my whole body around so that I'm like, I'm, I'm leaning up against my art table with my hip against it. And then you can just get a little bit easier time doing some of these verticals like this. That always helps too. So I'm just going to keep picking up some paint. Sometimes you have to dry off a little bit of paint on the sponge if you have too much paint on your brush. But this is the fun of it. Let's keep going here. Get into a rhythm for your painting. Don't kind of stick in one spot too long. And just keep looking at your photograph. And saying to yourself, where are those darkest darks? So I'm going to get those in after I do my light first wash. My first glazing is the super lights, just to get a tone on the whole paper. And then secondarily, we're going in and doing the darkest darks we can find. Let's go find the darkest darks here and just get them into the painting. And then that's all we have to worry about. And it doesn't have to be perfect. The lines in it, you know, you're... Brush strokes don't have to be perfect, is what I'm saying. You just get in some brush strokes here and there, but get the darks in there. Okay, and then where else have we seen some darks? We're seeing some darks under here, under some of the ornamentation. Here's some more darks there. So I'm just going across, doesn't have to be perfect. Like that. And again, I'm looking at my picture. Where do I see? The darks. Okay, there's some across here too. Like that. There's some there. We'll leave the fire escape for the very, very last part of the painting. Maybe we don't have to. Let's do a dark under here. I see this under the fire escape. Tends to look good if you can do some thicker lines and then thinner lines. I made this line a little bit too thick for the fire escape. So I'm just going to let that pencil line sit the way it is. And then I'm going to start mixing in a little bit of a more of a medium tone up here, like this. So that's a little bit lighter than this darker dark here we have. We need some kind of mid-tones. And then again, I'll, I'll get a mid-tone going here. Like this. That's the fire escape rail where the st steps are located. Like that. And I'll improv up here for my fire escape. Okay, 
where are my darkest darks? And let me leave the very, very extreme fine lines of the fire escape and a few of the other lines that I might see in the windows. Let's leave that for last, the very, very last thing. So if you can remember, try to leave your most finest lines till the very, very end of the painting. You might not even add them in there for that, for that matter. But that's just another good thing to keep in mind. I'm doing the heavier darks you can see here, like the window frames, the windows themselves, the fire escape, under the fire escape the fire escape itself, the staircase of the fire escape. I'm doing the real thick, heavy lines of the darks and some of the heavy lines under the ornamentation of the windows, the darks, that I'm getting in. Those are kind of like large, pretty bulky looking darks. But then when we start looking at the fire escape where there's those fine, fine, super fine metal um, spindles on the um, railings of the fire escape, that we want to do very, very sparingly and we'll do that last. We'll worry about that at the very, very end of the painting. So let's not concern ourselves with those real super fine details. Let's, or, or you know, or these small little safety window, um, uh, safety devices on the windows. You can do those details, but do them very, very last in the painting. Okay, so let's keep moving along here. We've got our darks. Let's get some blues here. So you can kind of see I'm adding some blue with that same mixture of the browns. And since I just want to get a couple of those bluish, some of those bluish uh, darks too as well up here so that it doesn't look like I just put them in one spot. I want to try to keep the color mixes going. All right, so that looks all right. That's pretty good. There we go. Okay, now I'm looking next. Where are some more darks? All right, over here. There is a dark over here. Along this side of the painting. So I'm going to try to get that dark in here. Okay, that goes up a little bit over here. Okay, then we have that stone, and then underneath that stone sill is the sign, kind of a medium tone, so you can do some medium tones now. I'm going to start going across here like this, kind of a medium tone, not super, super dark. And then here we have some dark blue in the, that mix there. Okay, now this one's a little bit, not too much a fine line, and there's some lights and darks to this. And I'm just trying to see if I can get the look of what I'm seeing there. Just a little bit of tone on the paper here. I use a little bit of a blotting, blotting technique just to tone that down a little bit. Black, brown, blue, black, brown, blue, red. Just try to get a couple darks in there. And that's pretty effective if you do that while it's still damp. And then we're going to get some of the red awning here. So let's start another mix down here. Maybe this is some kind of a red-orange 
with a touch of brown in it. That looks pretty good. A little more brown in there, maybe a touch of blue. That looks pretty good. Let's get our awning in here. Now our awning is a little bit darker at the bottom. So I'll go across here like so. I'm going to let that be a little wavy. It's an awning. Let's make that a little wavy at the bottom. Like that. Then we'll rinse off our brush, pick up a little bit of paint, and let's make it lighter up here. Damp brush, damp brush to get it a little lighter up here. Like that. And if that black seeps in there a little bit, no problem. Lift up a little bit with the... Uh, with the tissue a little bit. You can be very careful with the tissue though. Probably better to let that dry, that black shadow up here on the underside of the sign before uh, creating the awning, painting in the awning. But those are things you have to kind of learn as you go. And um, tell you what, let's use another, um, let's see what kind of brushes we might have here. Let's use the, let's do some brick. up here. So we'll use that same color we use for the awning for the brick up here. Maybe we'll make it a little more lighter. So we'll add a little more water to it and a little more orange, I think, to it. And then we'll muddy it up with a little bit of brown and a little bit of that black too. I think that might look good. And we'll start on the uh, left side and work our way across. If you're left-handed, you'd start over here and work your way this way. Everything's pretty much dry at this point. And I notice that this is... We can just get that wash going over here. Okay. And then we're getting that brick color, that nice brick wash. Let's make some uh, different colors to that. Let's keep some orange over here on this side. Maybe we'll have a little bit of blue over here, just to give a little bit of a... Some warm and cool. And this is going right over the tops of the windows, the brick. Like that. So this is kind of painstaking work now. You're working with your flat brush. And you're just going to keep working that brick color. And you just have to be real careful with where you're painting your brickwork and not um, go over the top of your stones that are around the windows, if that makes sense. So sometimes if you want, you can maybe add some um, tape, some very, very light masking tape, or you might um, draw a very, very faint pencil line on certain areas that you want to keep from painting over. Or you just have to take breaks and make sure that you're kind of keeping very mindful of the where the brick color is and then where the stone ornamentation is around the windows because that can really be a problem if you paint over those. And I like to just keep my hand resting on the paper wherever I'm at. 
I keep my hand resting on the paper, supporting my hand so that I can use my brush carefully like this. So I have my hand, so if I need to put down a piece of paper towel here, And you can do a little bit of cross hatching. You can add a little bit of orange, maybe muddy up some orange, maybe a little bit of blue in there. There we go. All right, perfect time for a break. We've gotten a lot done so far. We've gotten our brickwork done around the windows. We have our um, awning trim painted. We left out a little bit of the awning trim there. Let's I'll get a little bit of that going there, just so we can finish that up. Okay, so we have our awning trim done. We're gonna leave this stone above the um, sign here, that lighter color stone. We'll leave that white paper maybe, or that little bit of toned paper. But we've already been working 20 minutes. This is a perfect time to take a break now because we've um, got quite a bit of work done. We're still have about halfway, to halfway, we're halfway there. We have to get quite a bit of washes still on the paper, but I think from here, um, we're gonna use larger brushes maybe on some of this. And um, let's see how it goes. But we're not gonna make this incredibly detailed. We're gonna kind of live, leave this a little bit uh, abstract style so we're not going to get into a, too much detail so you kind of see where we're at perfect time to take a break we'll come back and we'll mix some more paint and we'll keep working and uh, we'll see how it turns out but I think we're really about halfway completed now and we'll uh, start back up again in just a few minutes I just want to take a quick break all right be back in a second okay so we're getting back started again we took a quick break breaks are good breaks are good Let's um, see now, we have this larger brush here. I think this 5 8 uh, Princeton Art and Brush Company is going to work good. Let's change our water out. So we'll try to get some fresh, clean water here. And I'll try to do maybe a little bit of a wash across the top here. Um, I'm going to go here and then leave that very, very top section light. So that's all I'm going to do is go across here with this kind of that muddy looking wash we have here. It's got some gold in it, some blue, some red. And we'll add a little more detail to that cornice on the top of the building here. But let's leave that top of the cornice, that white paper. I think that looks pretty good. And then let's continue. I think we should do some more darks. I'll mix up some more darks here. Brown, red, orange, um, some blue, some black. So let's get a lot of mixture there. That looks pretty good. More blue though. Rinse off the brush, maybe some blue down here, maybe some green. Okay, so plenty of darks. And I think that's what we're going to do here. We're going to go across here with some really, really good darks. And let's make sure that we go right across like that. Now you can do cross hatching, which looks good. Like that, make sure we're nice and dark under here. Maybe even make some really, really good dark straight black. Straight black under here, like that. So really powerful contrast, can really look good. Rinse off our brush, dry off a little bit of the paint and water, 
and then kind of smooth that dark down in here. Then maybe some blue and green down here, like that. And then we'll deal with this metal section down here later. And the same thing here, let's get some good darks here. So I'm using that really, really straight black. I'm keeping that straight black right up here at the top. Then I rinse my brush. Once I get that straight black in, and then I go in with our more colorful darks here with the reds and the blues. And then we kind of move, bring those down into the this portion here. Some blue, like that. Orange, red. Okay, and that looks pretty good. Like that. And again, let's have fun. This is kind of practicing our brush work and everything. So sometimes it's just a matter of... Sometimes I'll work on a painting and I'll just see that it's not going to be like one of those home run paintings, but... I don't worry about it and I just say, hey, it's a practicing session for me. I gotta practice my brush strokes, my brush work. I have to practice uh, more on my um, color mixing. I need to practice a little more on getting my washes down a little bit better. So it's all about just practicing and doing our compositions here and maybe this is gonna turn out really, really fantastic and I'll wanna put it in a frame. But the main thing is always Try to finish your whole painting no matter what happens. Even if it's going if it's going so terrible, don't worry about it. Throw it to the side and start another one or do something different. But if it's coming out halfway decent and you're kind of making your way through your painting, and I, and I follow this same rule myself, I try to always finish out the painting 100%. Because, again, I'm thinking of it as like kind of a practice session where I'm just going to keep, you know, like if a, if a guitar player or a piano player, if they're practicing their scales in their music and they make a mistake on one of the notes or a few notes or something they don't stop playing the song necessarily they might just keep going and play the rest of the song all the way through and then they'll just make a mental note to themselves and say oh i'm kind of having a trouble spot in the middle of that song in this certain section but that doesn't mean that every time they get to that spot they stop practicing because then what will happen is um they're not going to learn the rest of the song because they keep stopping at the point where they're having difficulty so that is the same for artwork you keep painting. If it's not perfect, you don't worry about it. You just finish out your painting. And then you might, when you're done, look at it and say, all right, I see I had a problem with um, maybe my washes don't look so great for my brickwork or, um, you know, maybe um, some of my pencil lines don't look the greatest. I might have went off on some of my scale and I didn't make the windows the correct sizes. Whatever it is, you don't worry about it. I'm just going to continue on here and keep going. And... We've accomplished a lot already, so we've got some good darks going in here, and uh, some more gold and orange here. So I'm going to do a little bit of gold and orange inside here. Seems to be a golden orange light in here. Rinse off my brush. This way, I just have it. I have a damp brush now. And then maybe I'm going to get that jet black just to see if there is a couple of spots in the back here that do look better with some black. Really, really dark, dark black in there. Yeah, that looks better, maybe. A little bit of black there. Straight black. And then I smooth that out with a damp brush downward, and that's good. All right, so we're kind of moving along here. And what's the next thing we can do? I think we could do a little more of some
a little bit of wash over the metal here. And uh, what else do we have here? I think we're looking pretty good. Let's get some wash up in these windows. Just let's get some tone on the paper anyway. Let's do that. Some gold. Some blue. A little bit of dark up there at the tops. Oh, one over there. <laughs> Try to lift up if you have a little tissue. There you go. Lift up with the, and then we can use some white paint to cover that over. So if you go over a spot, don't worry about it. We'll use some white paint, titanium white, to go over that spot we just went over. Might not be noticeable, but in any case, don't worry about it. Okay, so we got a little bit of darks on the windows there. And I think we're kind of wrapping things up here. I think we look pretty good. Um, we're going to have a little bit of some warm and cool so we have some blue down here warm colors up here we have some of that golden orange let's get a little bit of shadow under the signage here like that okay there we go Time to clean the water. That water's getting pretty murky and dark there. Perfect time to add a little bit of fresh water to our water container. And I'm going to try to blend this in a little bit. There we go. Try to blend that in a little bit. Just do a little bit of blending. There we go. All right, so already we can see we, we have some good darks in here, some good medium tones, and some lights too. So that's kind of like what really looks good in a watercolor painting, some real, really dark, you know, some really super darks. Some good middle tones with our brickwork and some of our shadows over here. Some of our uh, metal colors along this storefront here. And then we have some more really lights on the sidewalk and some lights up here in the sky. So that really does, that's what kind of is like a good classic watercolor. Lots of tonal value range and, you know, lots of lights and darks and middle tones as well. And if you can keep the kind of idea that maybe you want to have maybe like for this painting, the really, really super darks are not that many, but they are, you can see I added them in, but there, there's not a tremendous amount of super darks in here. There's mostly like middle tones and lights. So I use the super darks here sparingly, and then the rest are kind of like middle tones. And then there's some bright lights too on some of the trim around the windows, the stone and so forth and the sidewalk. And some of the sky is kind of pretty bright white. But now is a good time to... Um, Take another break. Let's take another quick break, and I think we can finish up at this point. We'll do some fine details, and we'll call it a day. Maybe I'll do a little bit of shadowing before we... Let's use the um, my Simply Simmons brush here, and let's do some shadowing. I'm just going to go across this spot here, under the cornice, with like a medium tone shadow. And I'll try to pick up some different lights and darks and cools. Um, some kind of a bluish mix here, too. There we go. So we have a little bit of a shadow there. And then let's do another um, shadow. And we'll do the same thing. We'll just go underneath here. And I'm just going to kind of try to go across freehand if you have to. Sometimes it will help if you can find something like um, 
a piece of, I have a piece of molding here, trim. Sometimes you can take a piece of molding or trim and put it across your uh, table and then you rest your hand on it so you don't rest your hand onto the painting. Sometimes that helps a little bit. And then you can kind of just slide your hand along this too. You kind of just ride your hand along the piece of trim or you can find like a curtain rod, something, whatever you find. Be creative. You're the artist. Be creative. Find some things to help you to help yourself to get some straighter lines. I know I always struggle with getting straight lines here. And then maybe I'll make some shadowing with let's use a, let's use a square brush, flat brush here. So I'll use the flat brush now. And maybe I'll do the same thing and I'll just I'll go like this. And I'm going to leave those little squares which are trim that are sticking out or protruding out further so they're catching a little bit of the light from the sky above and the other parts are kind of underneath further back. And then maybe there's a little bit of there's a little bit of um, tone on this top, very tippy top of the rooftop here, the coping on the top of the cornice like that. There we go. Good. All right, you can see the more we put in some more washes, middle tone washes, it's looking more coming together quite nicely. Let's do some, again, I'm going to, I said we were going to take a break, but let's, before we take a break, let's get some of that golden orangey color for the stone. And maybe we'll just do some I'm just going to put a little bit of that golden color for the stone, the weathered stone, on this uh, beautiful New York City street scene. We're doing a gorgeous storefront and apartment building. And we're just building layers of colors and washes. And we just noticed that there's a little more is a little more darker shadowing underneath the bottoms of these windows here. The stones up above, the stone headers, and then we can do a little like that. Okay. Looks pretty good. All right, so we are Just about ready. We'll take another break here in a second. All right, perfect. Let's take a break. We'll come back. We'll do some fine ornamentation with the fire escape. Maybe a couple details. Maybe we'll put our name here in this signage area so that we might call it our art store or maybe our um, diner or restaurant, whatever we want. You can create your own uh, signage for your own purposes, you know, as an artist, you can put your name on here, maybe you sign your name and art store, your name and art store, whatever it is, have fun with it, or you find something that you might like to put there, something else creative, it's all up to you. All right, so let's get started in just a second. We'll take a quick break and we'll come right back. Okay, we are going to finish up our last bit of details here. And always remember, you can go back in and do even more subtle details if you'd like to do a little bit of brickwork uh, maybe here and there a couple little small just dashes of some brickwork here and there I mean you wouldn't probably want to do everything in brick here around this reddish brick area but even if you added a couple small bricks maybe we'll do that maybe we'll add a few small brick lines just to give it a little bit of a feeling of um, brickwork there and let's do a just a little bit of that golden color for the stone across here so I'm just going to add a little bit of that stone color across here. And there's a little bit of darks there. Good. And then 
I might use this again. And I'll use my Simply Simmons and maybe I'll just try to get a maybe a vertical line over here. So I'll dry off and just give myself a damp brush. Like that. So once I get a damp brush and get a damp mark on my paper, then I can just go in and touch some dark paint to that here and there. Maybe not everywhere, but a few spots like that. That works good. Then I will use a needlepoint brush for my final details for the fire escape, maybe. Let's try that. So I'll just get some dark darks here, some black, and some brown and orange, I think that is there, and a little bit of blue, maybe. And I'll just see if I can get some of this. And I always mention if I see something, I'll try to get that in. I noticed that I didn't get the tops of the... This is the top of the... That's the top of the fire escape there. Like so. And then I'm just going to get in the, the fine ornamentation of the... But I'm not going to do this super critically perfect. I'll just try to maybe ride my hand along the along this trim piece here. But I'm not going to worry about getting it super accurate. You can just see I'm going to go across. Then I can kind of go up this way. I can get this probably freehand like this. You can kind of see that angles back a little bit toward the wall. Like that, and then we can just go right down the, the run here, right down the line. And you can do this freely like this. You could take your time a little more maybe, if you'd like to, maybe like measure it out more carefully, but I think this looks all right. I think it's kind of free looking, fun, like that. I think that looks good. And then we'll do the same thing down here. We're gonna do some of these lines you can use the Again, you can use some of this trim, like a, a piece of curtain rod or some wood, uh, maybe a heavier ruler if you have a ruler, and then you can just... It helps to get a straighter line sometimes. I can get it pretty good like this, freehand. But these are kind of nice when you get these finer lines in. It matches up with up here. Like that, and the same thing here. And if we get a couple of these fine, very fine lines in the painting, it kind of all harmonizes together and we start to see that there's some repetitive uh, brush marks and things in the painting. A little bit of a shadow there. And my pencil marks are pretty dark too. I, paint, I did a pretty dark pencil drawing here. And I'll just add a little shadow there. Like so. Use a little blotting sometimes just to soften some things up a little bit like that. Maybe I'll do a little bit of a detail on this light fixture. We'll do a little bit of a there, the light fixture, and then what else do we have? I'm looking back at my picture, a little bit of a that's a little bit of a step up, and then uh, into the building there, and then there's also some lines in the concrete. Let's get those in just so kind of leads our eye into the painting. And there's a bit of a dark line over here. I'll use a little bit of that really, really dark black. That kind of looks good along here.
good. Looks good. Okay, we add some darker darks. You know, you add some of that really straight black almost there. And you can kind of see how it kind of improves a little bit some of the detail of the picture. Yeah, some of that really, really dark black there. That really does. Look pretty good. And then over here, a little more. So if we pick up some of those shadows under some of these uh, horizontal lines, like at the doorway, and the door trim that sometimes really does look pretty good and then like we said we can add a little bit of um, maybe some fine brickwork so I'm going to use this brush here and maybe I'll use a little bit of orange and red like this, and then I'll just dry off a little bit on the... And then maybe if we do add a few little bits of brick here. Maybe just a few spots here and there. Sometimes that can really improve. Let's see if we can make them a little darker. Maybe if we make the bricks a little bit darker, like this. So we just make a couple here and there. Like that, a few here and there. Make them a little darker so they kind of stand out a little bit cross there and that does look kind of good a couple here and there actually it looks really good kind of spruces things up a little bit. And let's keep going here. A couple more bricks. So if we add them in a little bit here and there, it does kind of like make our eye look around the painting a little more so we kind of get more interested in looking at the painting because we're seeing little details that might look interesting. All right, and then uh, what else can we do? I think maybe I'll just do a touch more of the blue sky. So I'm going to take some of that blue and I might just add a touch of blue like this. And then just kind of blend it. And then just blot it a little bit with a tissue just to kind of give us some more color up there in the sky.
no worries if we get a little bit of smudges. You can bl uh, blot away this, especially with these uh, Prang Oval 16 paints, you can you can kind of clean the smudges off pretty easy in any spots you might have. Okay, so what's next? I don't know. I think I'm going to sign my name on this here. Um, I think it'll look pretty good, kind of like a reddish color it might look good. Kind of like a brick red. Maybe I'll just put my uh, name here in script. Maybe I'll make it a little more exciting like that. Chris's art store, why not? We'll have an art store here. And then maybe we'll do some print down here. Maybe we'll say there's paint. There's brushes. Have fun with this. <laughs> Put your name on there. Brushes, paint, brushes, paper. Art supplies. There we go. Finished painting. All right, everyone. I hope you had a great time. I always mention, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe below on the right-hand side. This way you keep up to date on our um, my videos coming out every week. You'll see what we're doing um, for paintings. We do all kinds of subject matter. This happens to be um, a, um, obviously like a city scene, but we do as well, we do We also do landscapes. We do landscapes, cityscapes. Um, we'll do, besides that, we'll do flowers, sea, uh, boat scenes, um, figure painting. We do it all. And I'll just, I'll put a chimney up here too. I just, I just actually created this sky with a little bit of more paint. But you could do a chimney up here too if you want. Like that. That makes it look a little more interesting. And you can put some brickwork like we did here. So I'm just kind of, as I'm just going over the last few details that we're doing here, have fun with this. Also too, I have a brand new book out. If you go on Amazon, you just type in Chris Petrie watercolor book. You'll see my new book. I'll also have a, I'll have a um, link below in the description of the video here. So you can go right to Amazon and check out the new book and see what it looks like. And uh, I think we, we have a finished painting here. And we'll just put a couple. Oh, we're trying to go too fast here. Let's let this dry, but you get the idea. We're going to continue to work here to get a little more interesting uh, features on this painting. You can do a little more details. I wouldn't go too much more than this, but you can kind of see we'll do a little more, maybe a chimney here with a couple um, flue pipes on top. 
like so. And then maybe we'll put a couple brick. We'll add a little brick uh, details to this too. So we'll do a couple bricks here, but it's the paint's still wet here, so you have to wait till that dries, obviously. So don't worry about it. Let that dry. Let your um, chimney dry here before you go ahead and put some more of those interesting brick details on there. But you can kind of see we have some few more details that we did here on the uh, painting. And again, if you have a little smudge or something like that, you have to use some fresh, clean water. So I usually empty out the water, get some fresh, clean water, and you use a, a piece of paper towel with fresh, clean water. And you can always just do a little bit of that scrubbing, and you, there we go. Perfect. And then I'll, once this dries, I'll add a few more details. But this is pretty much it. You'll see the final details once I um, take a picture of it and put it on the thumbnail. But I hope you enjoyed this again, this video. I thought, I, thought, I thought this was really a lot of fun. We got a lot of details in here, didn't we? And we had fun with it. We didn't worry about it. And again, if we were halfway through it and it didn't look so great, we just finished it anyway. Finish it out. Keep practicing. You're going to be practicing anyway as you go through this. You're going to be, you know, getting those washes in, mixing colors and all that. So... You know, maybe you might finish it and you say, like, one section didn't come out too good. Well, then maybe you can kind of crop out the section that didn't turn out good. So there's always a way to... Sometimes you might say, well, only the doorway came out good. Well, you can put a mat on the doorway there. Store. That would be good. I've done that with many paintings where I just used a small portion of the painting because I thought everything else didn't look so great. And what else do I have here? Do I have any other pre-cut mats? You can always use these. We can always use these to section off sections of your painting. If you find that you might have made a couple, had a couple, you know, issues up here on top with the windows, no big deal. You can just kind of crop out the, crop out some of the other things in the painting, like that, like this maybe. So you can do that. You can go around the painting, see if there's some spots that look really, really good. You can focus in on those. And I'm going to wrap it up for now. Again, thanks so much for coming by. We had a great time painting. We'll see you on the next video. Happy painting, everybody.